Hey, good afternoon. It's Byron King, South Carolina Association of Realtors. Thanks for tuning in. The video you're about to see is from a, a realtor in the uh, Piedmont region whose buyer client almost lost $257,000 in the email hack wiring fraud scam. We've done several videos and email alerts about this scam and I wanted you to see this video from uh, a real realtor that went through the scam. Uh, I'm Linda Hoverman O'Neill. I am with Remax Metro. I've been in the real estate industry since 1985. 31 years in the business, full-time agent all 31 of those years. Graduated college, went straight into real estate. Um, I am very technically skilled. Uh, I I have uh, embraced technology as it came into the industry. I uh, was one of the first agents to have a website, one of the first agents to use email, one of the first agents to text. Yet, I was the victim of probably the biggest email scam in both Carolinas in 2016. It basically started with a simple phone call. I was leaving a walkthrough inspection and heading to my office and I received a phone call from the loan officer doing the loan for the buyer closing the next day to ask me if I had wired, sent wiring instructions to my client for the closing tomorrow. And um, I said, no, uh, I, I hadn't. I've been, a, been showing property all day. I had not been at my computer at all. I said, well, your buyer received wiring instructions from you this morning at about 9.30 a.m. My face went white. Um, really, there was nothing to do except to get on the phone immediately with your buyer and have him go immediately to the bank and notify them that there is a strong possibility that he has fraudulently wired funds to an incorrect account. We, uh, on the wiring instructions, there was the name of the bank. It was a Wells Fargo account. Uh, what was quirky about it, though, is the Wells Fargo account was in Texas, which probably should have been a clue that he should have confirmed this with the uh, closing attorney and the bank. But again, it was Wells Fargo to Wells Fargo. Here was uh, the wiring information, the instructions, the name on the account. Uh, we contacted the bank and got as deeply as we could there and let them know what was going on with that, with that specific branch in Texas. So the account name on there, we were able to Google this person. We actually found this person and the, she knew nothing about what was going on. Her account had been hacked too. That's how they planned to get the funds from point A to point B to obviously point C is their account overseas. That's the whole goal, to be able to do this seamlessly and without getting caught. Perpetrators that make a living on doing this, this is a beautiful way for them to make money because unlike with the cashier's check, if, that is, if somebody brings that into you, you can stop payment on it. On a wire, typically you can't. Had this been, had our situation been a Wells to a Bank of America transfer instead of Wells to Wells, it would have been done. We we learned. I've had the FBI involved. Um, I met with them. They have my hard drive. We did a two-hour interview, and we have determined how I was hacked. And I was hacked by a person pretending to be a first-time home buyer in approximately February. Someone named Casey sent an email pretending to be a first-time home buyer, stating that they were ready to get started with the home searching process. And by the way, I have my Wells Fargo pre-approval letter attached. So being you know, a realtor, I opened the pre-approval letter and it went nowhere. It just did one of those little spins, just went nowhere. Um, so I downloaded again and did the same thing. So I emailed her requesting a second pre-approval. I just thought it was a defective file. I, you know, we get those. And so I emailed again and just requested more information. Can we just talk? Never heard back from them. You know, I really thought nothing of it until the FBI agent came in and asked me if I'd received any unusual emails. And then a light went off in my head. So what we have determined between my IT guy and the FBI is that file that would not open was a virus that gets into your computer that allows the perpetrator now to see everything you're doing. They have access to everything because as you type on their screen it shows exactly what you're typing. So they have my passwords, they have my banking information, they have my credit card information, they have everything they want about me all right there because they see me typing it in. The perpetrator has every contract 
they have the names, they know the purchase price, they know the down payment, they know if they're a cash buyer. You know, they're not going to chase after an FHA buyer that's putting down 3% down. They chased after my buyers that were buying a $680,000 house, putting down $257,000. And they started going after this money the day after I scanned the contract and uploaded it to DotLoop. It happened to any of us. Think how visible we are. I mean, we're, we're prime targets. We, we're instructed in order to succeed in real estate to be as visible as possible. And your vis visibility includes your name, your phone number, your email address, your website, Facebook. I mean, it's not like we're hiding and it's not difficult to find any of that information. Now combine the fact that you have my email address with now you are in my system fully with the virus where you can see everything I'm typing. You are me. Uh, you, they were definitely pretending to be me. It's an easy thing to think this will never happen to you, but it can. Yes, I was a victim. My email account was hacked. However, as the agent, we owe to our buyers a sense of safety in email communication. And I, I think it should be a continuing education program for agents to, to learn how serious this is. Because like me, I, my first thought when this happened was, oh, it, okay, something does happen. My errors in emissions insurance should take care of this. No, it doesn't. And I am certain that probably 90% of the real estate population thinks the same thing. If it's important to disclose to a buyer or a seller that you are representing them when you meet, I think it's equally important to disclose to a buyer or a seller the money process if you do buy or sell a home. Uh, I talk the whole time when we're looking, you know, I explain to them if there's a mortgage, how they're going to go about getting the mortgage, bringing, bringing that money the final few days prior to closing, and I let them know verbally while we're talking, you're never ever going to get anything from me or from your lender or from my closing attorney asking for money. And more importantly though, I'm having conversations with people. I'm, tell, I'm talking all the time, buyer, seller, everybody along the way. And this story, every client that ever works with me will hear this and every realtor that ever meets me will hear this so that they understand, I mean, they, they at least know it is legitimate and it have a method for trying to avoid it. If you communicate, had, I, had we communicated more, maybe had I called him more and just said, here's what's going on and explained, he would have mentioned something at that point in time. But we rely too much on our closing coordinators and on technology. It is going to take that. It's going to take more old school communication before there was email, before there was the internet, um, when it was just basic conversation between people. Thankfully, uh, the bank was able to stop the transaction before the money got overseas. So, But it could have been $257,000 lost. Uh, so you do not want to be in that position. So you want to watch this video, uh, get scared into taking some preemptive measures, educate your clients, make it harder to get into your emails, monitor your emails, keep in touch with your clients, use lawyers that you trust, and, have, and ask the lawyers if they have cyber theft insurance. Check into cyber theft insurance for yourself. Watch this video. If you have any questions, contact uh, South Carolina Association of Realtors Legal Hotline, Byron King, Austin Smallwood, Nick Cremitis, phone number 800-233-6381, and email is byron at screaltors.org, austin at screaltors.org, or nick at screaltors.org. Thanks for watching this video.